August has officially arrived, and it didn't take very long for not only National Hurricane Center to designate a new area of interest, but it also seems like our signals across the deep tropics continued to go up and up. Welcome back to the Weather Center, everyone. Happy Saturday, August 2nd, 2025. I'm going to get you all the latest information we have on the tropics and who it is that really needs to be watching. I personally right away suggest, this is simply a recommendation, we all continue to monitor what is going on through the Atlantic, especially as we get beyond the first 7 to 10 days of August. Some of the things I'm going to show you look a little on the concerning side, but there are still a lot of things that could go wrong for our potential future features, as well as a number of things that could very well dictate whether it's a hit or miss type of scenario if and when things get going. So thank you so much for taking some time out of your weekend. I hope it has been spectacular throughout up to this point and continues to do so. If you are brand new to the channel, it would mean the world to all of us as we get into the peak of the hurricane season. You consider kindly hitting that subscribe button. Let's give that like button a little nudge. You all have been fantastic about it. We need all the nudges that we can get. Because I do wholeheartedly believe, if not now, very, very soon, we're going to be into what I call phase one of hold on to your butts mode. Share this information if you believe you know folks would benefit from it and drop me a comment in the comment section down below. Let me know where you're tuning in from, if there's anything that you're worried about, or if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, happy to get back to you at my earliest convenience. I know I've been a little scarce in my comments, but that's because my schedule is just as bad as some of the ensembles I'm gonna show you. But with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. So this dropped as of eight o'clock this morning and it's also already climbing. Let me make sure my Epic Pen is ready to go. This is our new disturbance numero uno, numero uno. Formation chances are already up. 30% chance over the next two days, 30% chance over the next seven days. Now, to tell you the truth, if we had a random short notice running to get our next named storm, Dexter, this one can do it. The models have been extremely interesting off the east coast of the United States. I haven't shown it too much to tell you the truth because, thankfully, if and when this gets going, it's going to rocket right out into the upper Atlantic, causing no issue for pretty much anybody outside of the fishes out out there and any mariners or sea routes that some folks may be taking here and there in the North Atlantic. But this does have really good ensemble and deterministic model support. But because it's going to be dropping off the coastline with our next frontal system, that thing is right in through here. It's getting ready to exit over open water momentarily. Because of its position, the jet is very quickly going to pick that thing back up and move it off towards the east-northeast rapidly. It'll even miss Bermuda for all intents and purposes, which is good news out there. And then I think, truthfully, if we continue the trends that we've been seeing, you know, there's been some natural ebbing and flowing because we haven't had anything new just yet splash down off of Africa. But I would say by about Monday or Tuesday at the very latest, we will have another AOI out there across the deep tropics in the MDR. And we're going to talk all about that right now. Let's get into it. We're going to skip the satellite. I don't want to talk too much. I want to get you all the information. Satellite, we obviously have an active weather pattern across the south, up the east coast, thanks to that front and that digging trench off that's what's going to produce this bad boy you can see right there those deep shades of forecast anomalies for tropical cyclone development and then there you have it there's the mdr signal beginning to perk up as well this is the time frame of august 4th through august 11th and if you go just a tick beyond that to around that charlie anniversary i've been mentioning the last couple of updates bam there you go now i will say looking at this chart this personally is what my gut is leaning towards in terms of where our waves and our things, like I said in the last video update, where our things in the tropics could meander and could flow. I'm not going to say tropical storm. I'm definitely not going to go as far as to pre-name storms. We know we don't do that here on the Weather Center. This is where things, I believe, will generally trend, and I'm sure you're probably going to see on social media that the latest year, I'm going to rip the Band-Aid off. Latest Shiro has a Margo slash Nigel thing going on. I'm not too confident in that. And we'll talk about that here in a moment. You go another week into time from the 18th to the 25th, my mom and my brother's birthday. And you can see those anomalies continue to shift closer and closer to the greater Antilles, the Bahamas, and the United States. 
Now, here's our latest 12Z ensemble probabilities, courtesy of the Euro. This is earlier this afternoon, and right out of the gate, this is August 10th. You can still see a bit of a glimmer of a probability there, a glimmer of a signal just off the mid-Atlantic. This could be a second low vortice that tries to spin on that leftover frontal chain. I'm not too sure we're going to get multiple spins. That's what the GFS and the Canadian model have been showing, but the GFS and the Canadian have been quite doing well in the overall background state of the environment. Stick with me towards the end of the video and I'll talk to you a bit about that. And there is wave number two. We have a dry wave north of Puerto Rico, Hispaniola right now continuing west-northwest. Some very small members, a very small cluster of members continue to try to develop that as it moves further and further into the western Atlantic. But you can see on the latest run of the Euro, we have managed to find a random escape route in the Central Atlantic. Now, this is great news for everybody out there. This would also play no role in anyone's weather, but I caution taking this one run to heart. And I'll talk to you about why it is I think that way. And then upstream of that wave, you notice we have that second signal for more upcoming tropical waves as our environment is forecast to get better and better. Here's a look at your latest 12Z spaghetti models. I'll just rapid fire through these. We already know what the end result's gonna look like. We have a huge, huge dispersion in our track guidance. I have no confidence in this. I'm gonna tell you that right now. We're about six minutes into this video, give or take editing. I have no confidence in this. And by that, I mean, this is going to change big time. We're going to see a lot of windshield wiping, especially since the one kicker is what I'm going to call it. That's causing these huge fluctuations, at least in the operational Euro is so small. It is synoptic scale, but it has a lot of variability with it. And that comes in the form of an upper level low. You switch over to your AI ensembles, and I do think this is a bit more believable, unfortunately, to tell you the truth. You can see a couple ensemble members over the Southeast still try to fire up that first wave that's fairly dry. Really looks fairly similar to pre-Debbie, pre-Ernesto last hurricane season. When you take a look at it on satellite, go ahead and if you want, go pull up Tropical Tidbits or cyclonic weather your website of choice and you'll be able to see it looks very similar then there's our second wave and the ai model is very well con convinced i should say it will continue west northwest towards the turks and caicos the bahamas by about august 12th to august 13th and then once it finds our incredibly warm waters out there they are hot this heat dome over the central and eastern United States did us no favors for anything that works its way closer to home. And you can see the model does start to really flare up the potential for tropical cyclogenesis once it gets into that area of the Atlantic. Then here comes our third wave, same level of dispersion, and then a fourth signal just beyond that, which we won't really talk about. That's way too far out in time. Before we go any further, I just want to show you, look at these water temperatures. Look at that. Zoom me in on the Gulf. In terms of the data, if you look in the lower right-hand corner where my cursor is, I'll draw a little arrow for you. Here's the Gulf coastline. Here's the Southeast United States coast. Here's Cuba, the Bahamas, Yucatan Channel. Obviously, this is very close to a lot of us. And if you look in the lower right-hand corner, the maximum temperature value on here is 33.1 degrees. And remember, we only need 80 to 85 degrees for development, let alone rapid intensification of tropical cyclones. We just saw a fantastic example of that with Iona in the eastern and central Pacific. In cooler anomalies, the thing rapidly intensified from a tropical storm to a Category 4. So that's definitely something, regardless of if it's within the next two weeks or the next month or two, we have to keep our eyes open for. Now, for the very first time, I'm taking a look at these deep mind models, the AI ensemble members from the Google computer model. And I think this is very interesting. I've honestly never pulled this up before. This is the very first time I'm using it alongside you all. And if you notice, I have the operational Euro turned on. Most definitely an outlier there. It is far to the right of the bulk of our ensemble members. And then as the ensembles continue forward in time, notice again, we get that huge track dispersion. But this would be wave number two, this cluster of ensemble members right through there. And then here comes our third one as we get further and further into about the 12th through the 15th of August. And wave number three will be watching for potential development out there in the MDR. 
So again, I want to say I'm not confident in these tracks at all. If you take a look at your GFS control member, the 850 millibar winds show two weak vortices moving up towards the southeast United States. You can see the first wave starting to try to develop here by about the 15th, and then there's our third wave with another one back behind that on the 15th, pushing through our leeward and windward islands into the eastern Caribbean, and then another preparing to splash down into the Atlantic off the west coast of Africa. GFS also shows that dispersion, albeit some of those ensemble members continue to keep it weaker and further west. And that's one of the primary things as well with this feature. The Euro within the last two runs, the 6E and the 12Z this afternoon, are suddenly thinking this thing could flare up within the next four to five days. I really don't think that's the very that's the first variable that I truthfully don't see happening. If we had a very favorable Atlantic, Eastern Tropical MDR and Central MDR, absolutely. This would be an instance where before it even splashes down, National Hurricane Center would have the AOI out there. We've seen it several times before. I don't think that's the case. I think we still have about eight or nine days before any tropical wave out there in the Atlantic anyways. We're not counting the homegrown slop off the East Coast. But any tropical wave out there has an opportunity to really get going when we get the MGO in position and we really strengthen the conditions that are more conducive for that formation of a tropical storm, let alone a hurricane. The Canadian ensembles are also slowly but surely waking up and smelling the metaphorical tropical coffee. If you fast forward through time, this model has been dead almost all hurricane season. You can see a little bit of a signal there off the mid-Atlantic coast, and naturally you can see it riding the west side of our high pressure. It's going to continue to accelerate off towards the northeast. No issue for anybody. may just be another attempt at stealing a named storm. And then as we go past the 6th, there's our wave in the central MDR. Notice that reinforcing area of subtropical high pressure over the central and eastern Atlantic. As it continues on a west-northwest track, slowly but surely, the ensemble members finally pick up a little bit of additional support. There's one out to sea member there, but then as you look closer to the western Atlantic, the southeast United States, I will say, I know it only looks like a couple of ensemble members, but if you've been watching the computer models, the Canadian ensemble specifically, from June up until now, it's been like pulling teeth, really yanking teeth to get this thing to even show a tropical depression member on any of its charts. And in this case, considering that level of continuity, this is a healthy signal. So it's definitely something we want to pay attention to. Okay, so now let's get you over to the MJO. This has been very interesting to watch evolve. I'll take myself out of view so you all can see. We're getting ready to cross in from phase eight to phases one through three. And according to the European model, we should maintain a fairly excited MJO pass as it moves through the Atlantic, over Africa for a period of time, and then meanders in the western central Indian Ocean all of which are very favorable in giving the Atlantic a little nudge in the favorability category, increasing moisture, decreasing the Saharan air layer, bringing down the wind shear, motivating our pressures to decrease and increase our lift, you know, all that good old shebang. You take a look at our other computer models here, the other dynamical models from Climate Prediction Center, showing an even greater chance we have an enhanced MJO passing overhead, regardless of whichever one you look at. All of them do show we're getting ready to come into the favorable phasing, and this one in particular has been gaining traction on social media. If you look closely there, and I may zoom in post-production, it actually shows the MJO going through phases one, two, squeaking into three, and then retrograding right back over Africa. And the latest Euro vorticity anomaly, velocity anomaly, actually shows that as well. If you take a look, this is valid from earlier this morning, the 2nd of August. We have that favorable setup rocking through as we speak. And then as it moves further into the Atlantic Basin, we're looking over here right now, the top right corner. As it continues its eastward propagation, we're going to get a bona fide African standing wave to set itself up from about August 5th, maybe August 6th, we'll say, through to the backside of the month. Now, this is where I do think 
the GFS very heavily differs and is showing a little bit of its bias. Now, naturally, the euro has a tendency to propagate a little too fast, but I think the GFS is far too hung up. If you look at this, this would essentially imply the season's over. We're done. We're cooked. All of August into September, we're done. We're not going to get anything. And it continues to favor lift and a almost stationary MJO, a standing wave with very weak pulses moving through the environment from the maritime continents of India, Australia, Indonesia, eastern portions of China, and so on and so forth, Japan, all the western Pacific, and it shows nothing but increased subsidence and sinking over the entirety of the Atlantic and Africa. So I think this is where our other discontinuity comes from, why the GFS has been crickets and the euro continues to show hurricane, tropical storm, etc., Canadian models also kind of doing the same thing. When you look across the northern hemisphere, you really can't spot the MJO. It's all lopsided to the southern hemisphere as it moves west to east across the tropics. And as you go through the month of August, you can kind of see some shades of green perking up out there over the southern hemisphere Atlantic, but not a whole lot across the MDR or the tropics. Maybe a faint glimmer of it between the 12th and the 14th before we're back under sinking conditions right through the deep tropics and much of the northern northern hemisphere Atlantic. So it's very interesting. We have a lot of things we have to iron out before anything is confident. My level of confidence right now, if I had to give you some key takeaways, thanks so much for those of you who stuck around to the end of this video. There's a signal. There's multiple signals. Something is coming. We just don't quite know what it fully looks like just yet and where it is going to go. But it does seem like activity is on the horizon. And again, we are at DEFCON 1, or I should say DEFCON 4, of hold on to your butts. We're not quite there yet. We're definitely in that mode to where we're keeping our head on a swivel. Not one eye, not two eyes. we got to keep our head on a swivel as we get closer to the peak of the hurricane season. And with that being said, we'll go ahead and close out the video. Thank you all so much for being such a wonderful audience. Thank you for sticking with me despite how weird and chaotic my schedule has been, not only through July, but especially as we get into August. I promise you I will continue these upcoming tropical updates, these occurring tropical updates, and I'm going to be reintroducing live streams very soon. Sometime this upcoming week, in between other things, work, I got a full week ahead. I'm doing a morning show tomorrow, full five, six day week ahead as well as that with school finals, you know, but I think this is the time where we got to start upping our content a little bit. So stick around, make sure your notifications are turned on. Again, consider clicking that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. And let's share this channel, continue to grow the Weather Center community as we get into the point where it matters most for all of us during the hurricane season. But we'll see you all again very soon. Until next time, have a beautiful weekend. This is Weather Center Nazario, signing out.